Now let's do some more advanced exercise on cues using two senders and blocking mechanism. Here we can see in illustration how the task can be sent to the blocked state when accessing the queue. In this example we've got the following components. A queue with length of four elements, the same size, a sender task and a receiver task, which executes first. At the beginning, a receiver task tries to read the data from the queue. As the queue is empty, task is sent to the blocked state. In the next phase, a receiver tries to read the data from the queue again. This time the queue is empty, so receiver is sent to block state again. Just after it, sender task is sending message 1 to the queue. It is forcing scheduler to move the receiver task from blocked state to ready state. In our case we are using timeouts to get requests, thus in a third phase the receiver tries again to read the data from the queue, this time successfully, so it can continue its execution. In the fourth phase there is no activity in the queue. Both tasks operate in a ready state. Let's have a closer look on queue blocking mechanism with combination to CMC size version 2 API. After a sender is calling OS message queue put to send the data to the queue, it can do the following operations. If there is no free space in the queue, the sender task is blocked for suitable time. This time is specified within one of the arguments of this function OS message queue put. So it can be blocked for this time. Then it will continue execution, so the next interaction, but of course without sending the data to the queue, because there was no free space. In this case, uh, this OS message queue put function is returning OS error timeout, which means that the timeout elapsed uh, without uh, being successful in sending the data to the queue. So it is important to monitor the output of this function once we are using it within the task. In case we specify OS wait forever as this timeout, the task will be blocked till there will be a free space in the queue to send a new data. So it can be used to really block the task till the queue will have the free space to send the data. So it's really like a semaphore with possibility to send something afterwards. If there is a free space in the queue, the sender will continue execution, so the next instruction will be executed just after it will send the data to the queue. So it will not wait the settable time this time out, but it will continue just after sending data to the queue. This is an important message in terms of calculating the timeout, the timings within the tasks. Uh, concerning the receiver, a receiver to get the data from the queue is calling OS message queue get function. And if the queue is empty, uh, receiver task will be blocked for, again, settable time. Uh, then it can continue, of course, without the data reception. In this case, uh, there would be this return value OS error uh, timeout. Please, uh, for more details, you can, you can go to specification of the type OS status underscore T, which is used here. In case we'll specify it as a timeout OS wait forever, the receiver task will be blocked till there would be any new data within the queue. So again, it can be used to block the task till the data will come to the queue. If the data are available within the queue that can be read by the task, the task will continue just after the data reception. So again, it will not wait till the timeout will elapse, but just after the data reception. And an important message is that the scheduler is responsible to move the task from ready to blocked state and vice versa, in both cases just described. Before we will go with the code processing, let's uh, discuss what we would like to have within our application. Because both tasks, sender1, sender2 and uh, receiver as well, have the same priority, receiver will get data from the queue after both tasks put the data into it. So we can monitor what would happen if the queue would be full, uh, what would be the side effect, how it will be visible. Here on, this, on the screen we can see uh, such a situation. So at the beginning, receiver would like to have uh, to read something from the queue, uh, but the queue is empty, so receiver is blocked, is waiting for the new data, and uh, scheduler is uh, switching the context uh, to the next task, uh, which can be sender one, which is as well with the ready list. And and the sender1 is sending the data to the queue. And then after it, it will finish its job, uh, the scheduler is uh, switching it to the next task uh, from the red list. Uh, so the, the last task, which has been not yet executed from the red list with the same priority, is sender2. 
So again, sender2 is uh, sending next data to the queue. So after this, we've got two items within the queue. Then there is, let's say, the time for receiver. So receiver can accept within its uh, time slot and accept one item from the queue. So after this queue will have still one component. And then again, we've got the time for both senders, sender one and sender two. So at the end, we'll have three items in the queue. And then after receiver action, we will have one component less. And uh, in a few iterations like this, we will have the situation when the queue would be full and the sender would be blocked because there would be no free space to put more data. So in this case, it will be put in the blocked states and uh, it would need uh, to wait uh, till receiver will accept some data from the queue. This is how it will work. Uh, let's uh, check, uh, let's verify whether it will be exactly like we see on the screen. Let's do some practice with Q, where there are two senders and one receiver. We can reuse previous lab. We'll start with uh, stm 32 cubemx or stm 32 cube ide then free RTOS configuration, tasks and queues tab. Let's create two sending tasks, sender1 and sender2, and one receiver task with the same priorities like on the picture. We will use one queue with eight elements, eight bit long. After adding of those components, please generate the code and open main.c file. Within main.c file, we need to implement entry functions for sender's tasks. Within start sender1 function, we will define local 8-bit variable x set to 1. Then, within endless loop, we will send small s via SWO interface using task underscore action function. After this, we will put x variable to the queue with 200 milliseconds timeout. At the end, we will put sender1 task into blocked state for 2 seconds using osdli function. Similar operations will implement within start sender2 function. With different value of x variable, this time we will set it to 2. And then we will send big S over SWLO interface instead of small one uh, within task underscore action function just to distinguish in the final effect operations from sender1 and sender2. Then we need to implement our start receiver function. We will implement local 8-bit variable res set to 0. With an endless loop we will send big R over SWO interface using task underscore action function after this, in case of successful reception data from the queue, we will send a received character over SWO using again task underscore action function. We'll try to receive data from the queue using OS message queue get function with 4 seconds timeout. Then we will send our receiver task to blocked state for 2 seconds using OS delay function. After all of those code operations, please build the project, start debug session, open SWV ITM console and start the application. We should receive the result like uh, this one on the screen. At the beginning, sender1 is sending big S, then sender1 is sending small s, and then receiver is sending its big R, and in its next iterations it is receiving both elements from the queue and displaying them as 2R and 1R. What would happen if receiver will higher priority than senders? Let's analyze the situation on below picture. Receiver is executed first as highest priority task. It is blocked as queue is empty. Then sender1 is sending some data to the queue. This action unblocks receiver task. The receiver task continues its execution as it is the task with the highest priority and in its next iteration of the endless loop it is blocked again by waiting on for some data on the queue which is again empty. After this, sender2 is selected by the scheduler. This task is sending some data to the queue. Just after this, the receiver is woken up again by the scheduler. It's moved from the blocked to a run state. It is reading data from the queue and again it is sent to blocked state uh, by waiting for next data on the queue. And the situation, situation repeats. Uh, so sender1 is sending some data to the queue, it is waking up the receiver, then receiver is sent to blocked state again, uh, waiting for new data. Then sender1 is uh, selected by scheduler and is sending some data to the queue and so on and so forth. Let's perform simple example to test this situation. Let's continue with previous lab doing uh, only one small modification. 
In our case, a receiver will have a higher priority than both senders, so let's start from stm 32 cube mx or stm 32 cube ide With a free RTS configuration, please select Tasks and Queues tab, and then please change receiver task priority from OS priority normal, which is selected for both senders, to OS priority above normal. So in our case, receiver will have a higher priority than both senders. After this, uh, please build the code, uh, start a debug session and uh, verify whether behavior is in line with our expectations. This is our result. Receiver is executed first as highest priority task. It managed to send big R and then it is blocked by waiting on the queue. Then sender1 is sending some data there. We can notice it by small s uh, on SWO console. This action unblocks receiver task, which is displaying this message, it is 1. It continues its execution as it is the task with the highest priority. Within its next iteration, it manages to display R again, and then it is blocked by waiting on the queue. After this, sender 2 is selected by scheduler. It is sending 2 to the queue and big S over SWO. Just after this, receiver is woken up, it is sending 2R over SWO and is blocked again, waiting for next data on the queue. Let's consider the situation where we have single sender and two receivers. We should remember that the message from the queue is taken by the task with highest priority. In case of equal priorities, the task which is waiting longer time will be selected by the scheduler, thus it is not deterministic. Even if higher priority task is in blocked state, waiting for the access to the queue, it will be woken up immediately by the kernel in case queue will contain a new data. Only in a case a higher priority task is in suspend mode, it will be not taken into consideration by the scheduler. Thank you for watching this video.